All right, so basically really quick, how can you record both your monitors into Camtasia 9, which is actually a lot more stable than version 7 that I had before and that was it was not so good, it was crashing all the time and it was uh, recording black screens and things like that. It was dropping frames and stuff like that. So the uh, version 9, it's actually a lot more stable. So first of all, you should go to display settings and make sure your monitors are aligned. You know, they're not off like this. So make sure that's aligned, you see, like this. And then you will just hit record here. Once you hit record, you're gonna end up actually here where I just click the full screen button first and then I set up my audio by picking the right microphone and then make sure that you record the system audio in case you have files that have audio into your recording like uh, let's say if I open a video and that's gonna have audio that means you recording actually the system audio so you make sure you pick that setting also besides your microphone so you want to record your system audio and your microphone at the same time if you don't have file that are going to be playing into your recording then you can keep it off once you do that what we want to do actually to record both of our screens so then i just take the side here and i drag it all the way to the end of the other screen so this way i have both of the screens selected and as you can see here i have basically the uh, resolution of both of my screens together which is 3360 between the two of them and the height doesn't change so it's uh, 1050. All right so once you finish your recording you're gonna end up here where you're gonna do your edit. You can make this bigger and cut the parts of the view that you don't want or you don't like or you made mistakes. Basically you can see here if you go at the top here and you go on the project settings that your project is set up at this maximum resolution that you recorded. In case you don't have enough resources to to play this back and edit in 4k whatever you know between your two screens your resolution is too high and your computer cannot handle it then you might want to change the settings of your project and the way you do that it's actually by going here and you go project settings and very simply you can just go to 1080p like that and hit apply and then the thing is you need to actually delete this and put this back into the timeline and that way it's going to fit it into your project settings basically and to get rid of the black that's on the bottom and the top all you have to do is go here go on the project settings and then you go under fit to visible and this is going to make it 1080 by 598 you hit apply and uh, this way you're going to edit in 1080 instead of like a close to 4k type of resolution so like i said this depends on your machine if you can handle if you can handle the resolution or not um, and you just have to make sure that you do this in the beginning not after you start cutting the video because if you do it then i mean i can add this actually i cannot go back to make this bigger if i make it bigger i have to delete the video from the timeline and then insert the video again and then i can go back you know for example now i don't want to do it at 1080 as you can see i'm at 1080 so I don't want to do that. What I want to do is uh, delete this and then change my project settings. You can right click to do it or you can click up here, go project settings and then here under custom, you can insert the resolution that you had before and then you hit apply. And this way you will have again the video at the at the right resolution that you had before so in the beginning before you start editing you have to choose okay do i want to edit this in 4k at, at its full resolution or do i want to do it at you know a low resolution and this is a decision that you have to make in the beginning all right so once you're done with your edit you know you cut your parts out then you will go to share here and if you want to go directly to youtube you can do that you can just click the youtube button and then here you will uh, have to sign in and all that so but i don't want to do that i actually want to go to local file to just make a local file here it doesn't matter what you're going to have in the beginning picked i'll go to custom production settings and you go next and i will choose the mp4 recording format go next and 
this is basically directly from for YouTube. I take it off because I just want a normal file. I go to size and you can see here you have your native size. Now here you can also change to make this 1080. So if you can edit in the full native resolution, you can change it here. You can go here and do, you can do 1920, right? And automatically it's going to give you the height. So you can do that here. You don't need to do it under the, uh, the project settings, but you know, I think it's better to have a bigger and then you can go smaller when you export than the other way around. So I'm going to go back to the native resolution. And um, after that, you go to the video settings, you'll pick 30 frames and the profile, I will keep it at high and the uh, level I put at the highest level because I'm at a higher resolution. Quality, I, I choose 100 and I don't go to bitrate because it doesn't matter. The bitrate has a limit anyway with this. And under color, I choose HDTV because it gives me a lot better color than NTSC. Under audio, I just bump my bitrate by to 256. This is up to you. And then you will hit next and next. And then you will name your file and you will choose a destination. And you hit finish and it's going to render. Now, just to show you really quick, between the two files, so this is about 10 minutes recording. That's only about 120 megabytes. And this one is the same recording, but it's at its native resolution. As you can see here, 336 by 1046. So, so basically the size of the files is very small. I don't think it makes a difference if you're going to make it in the, if you're going to export in 1080p or your full native resolution, because it's not that big a difference into the, in the size of the file. And as far as quality go, it's also, I don't see any difference, at least in my screens. If you have maybe 4K screens, you can see the difference, but I don't see it. So I'm going to show you really quick. So basically this is the file that was recorded at 1080p, as you can see here. So the quality I think is very good for that. And it doesn't matter if I make it full screen or not. For some reason, when I did it in 1080p, it gives me this very wide format. And when I, you know, make it full screen, it goes into full screen. But when I don't, it stays as a wide format to where the one that was recorded as a full resolution, it uh, just, I don't know, it doesn't get into this wide format, but it, it looks the same to me. Like I said, for me, it doesn't make a difference because my screens are not such a high resolution. So I cannot tell what's the difference. To me, they look the same, both of them. So, so I don't think it matters if you're going to do it in 1080 or, or 4K. Somebody that has, you know, laptops and, and screens that are only 1080p, they're going to see a very good quality. Uh, it's such a small size file. Okay, so this is how you record dual screens into Camtasia 9, which is, I think is very stable from doing that because the version 7 was not at all. And then to export, like I said, this is the way how you would export the video. This is the formats that I found that are the most efficient and with very small file size and very good quality. Now you can, you have other formats there. Even if you go to custom here, you have other, you know, you can do window media format or you can do actually AVI, which it's going to be a lot bigger file. The same file that I showed you before, this one actually in AVI, if I do it uh, uncompressed, it's about 16 gigabytes compared to, you see, almost only 300 megabytes. So it's a big difference. Window media also, it can be done, you know. And the other thing that I found that if you just want to extract the video, it has here extra recording content, which you, ex you can extract a playable file that will play. You can set it any way you want into your computer. And then you can have a, a just a, a video file that you can bring into your different editor to edit there. Like if you want to do it in Premiere, you can just do that. You go here on the extra recording content and then that will give you a, uh, just a video file that you would work with in a different software, for example. All right, so I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.